it to you today. Thank you very much. I'm going to give the floor now to Mr. Sarisvolsky, who's the chairman for uh, the Parliamentary Assembly, uh, our delegation to the Parliamentary Assembly at NATO. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman. So, this is a delegation uh, in English. Shakespearean dilemmas of NATO. First, in, since I took over the chairmanship of NATO delegation of this House, in Edinburgh and in, in, in Riga, to be and what to be. Uh, I'm not joining the debate on how to redefine NATO because for that we need 16 volumes and, and, and 100 hours. Uh, but just to go straight to the, to the question what EU-NATO relationship can bring new, what kind of value added if it can bring, because for the moment these are two worlds apart. Whatever we find written in Albright paper, uh, these are two worlds apart, and the best proof is that uh, in the same city, which is, which is Brussels, there's NATO Brussels and EU Brussels, and uh, I don't ever remember any meetings on the key persons uh, level between the two institutions, except being invited by Pascal for a dinner. When authors of this house, uh, uh, so-called Vatanen report, were, were assembled, uh, but only French can be so inventive. Uh, this is a compliment. Um, yes, we have been drafting in this House the European Security Strategy and debating that. And uh, with Solana, by the way, who would guess that he was once upon a time Secretary General of NATO? Who would find traces of him being once upon a time Secretary General of NATO in his works as High Representative? Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sour, but I think that we need to say some few words, some words of truth, before we launch ourselves into some better future. Uh, when, I, when I listen about two ten pages, uh, Jamie said, two ten pages, I mean, for PR it's fine, but if it is ten pages, how many lines will be there on EU-NATO relationship? Two, Jamie? Two? Yeah. Three, okay. Uh, so I think we should not uh, really concentrate on technicalities because everything is about, about will, political will and philosophy. Uh, the problem is that there are two worlds apart and there are two separate uh, political visions and political philosophies. And it is probably not an accident and it's my congratulations, uh, félicitations au président de, de ce sous-comité to bring here French and Polish ambassadors. They are, the, they are the only EU member states who stress the necessity of coming closer and of elaborating more and doing more on, on, on security and military uh, aspect of the Union, which will be, by the way, one of the priorities of the Polish presidency. So political and philosophy, and uh, not very modestly, I would say that uh, asking for this approach to organizations very much overlapping in terms of membership, citizens, with the same citizens who are taken care of by the two organizations to a great extent. That it was this House who took it up, uh, uh, some would say in vain, uh, two years ago? Two years ago, yes. Um, so I think that uh, it was not NATO, or how it might be, to first to call for closer cooperation and relationship, because I remember paying a visit to NATO headquarters to Yabdes Hefer uh, with uh, Hansgert Pettering and von Volga, I mean, the, the, all, all the S chair of AFET and uh, the President of Parliament, and asking and inviting uh, Yabdes Hefer to come. He never no. turned up. Never. Uh, so now we are waiting for Rasmussen. Uh, and my initiative, Affet and, and said and uh, delegation invited. He is coming to see Buzek, but we'd like to have him 
in the hemicycle or in the PCO5, I mean, whatever, this big room for the joint effort and, 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 and the said and delegation debate on this cru crucial issue. Uh, could you pass it, Mr. Shi, to, yeah, to your boss? Um, it was our committee which, uh, for the first time, took it up in February 2009, when, uh, when I was its chairman, we debated EU-NATO relations and approved the first report on Vatanen. Vatanen report, you remember, Ms. Gomes, and... And then I went to Edinburgh, and I asked many people from NATO with the military or non-military uh, costume, Nobody ha ever heard of European Parliament. Perhaps they have heard. But about the European Parliament's report on EU NATO, nobody. Even those who have been reading the, writing, sorry, writing the declarations of the Assembly and so forth and so forth. And I, I checked again in Riga. The same. Nobody in NATO has, has, has read the report or knew that the European Parliament has been reflecting and writing a piece of paper on that. Um, donc, c'est quelque chose qui, qui, qui est passé tout à fait inaperçu du côté de l'OTAN. Uh, I know NATO only when, when I go by, by taxi to the airport. I, I know where is your, your headquarters. Otherwise, I wouldn't even know that you are here. Um, we need closer and complementary relationship and non-competitive. Uh, and uh, experts could tell us how to make it true, but there has to be a political will, and the problem is of the, of the lack of political will. Uh, but not to be only critical, but also to praise NATO, to be more balanced. I must say that for the first time, it was NATO who was our guide when we have drafted resolution in summer 2009, Georgia. Yeah. We just followed the NATO positions for the first time. We just say we fully agree and align ourselves with the NATO position on Russia-Georgia Georgia, uh, war. Donc, uh, en bref, uh, je dirais qu'on... So briefly then, I think I could say that we're listening to each other, but we don't really hear what we're saying. Uh, we've got a monologue. We haven't really got a dialogue. It was optimistic to, to, to hear and to host Madeleine Albright here. Um, there were questions about synergy. Uh, there were questions uh, how to bring down the walls between the two institutions and how to exploit the possible, uh, uh, possible, uh, the effects of the possible cooperation. And all that has still to be to be redefined uh, or, or, or discovered. Um, what what is plausible? that uh, the new strategic concept recognizes uh, that there is such a thing like vocation sécuritaire et militaire de, de, de l'Union européenne, ce qui était avant uh, impossible d'entendre, that there is such a thing like a Treaty of Lis Lisbon designed, among other, to strengthen Europe's military capabilities and command structures, and something which might eventually complement NATO forces. Uh, So everything is, is, is ahead of us. Uh, I, I think that if we start from a more critical note, we'll bring about better, uh, better, better results. For the moment, since we said the first things on both sides, and now I think that we repeat all, 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 the, all, the, all, all the time the same. We need more close, closer relationships, energy, let's go. Nothing really happens. Um, and it should. And... Uh, Already in, in, when we have been in, in, in Edinburgh, and we said, okay, would, would you NATO colleagues uh, expect anything as input into your concept from us? No answer. Even some astonishment. Well, we're just associate, what's the status? Mr. Lewis, we are associate together with Palestinians and Iranians. We have more or less EU, yes, in NATO Parliamentary Assembly, European Parliament has the same status as Iran, as ma, 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 Majils, I mean, this, the Parliament of Iran. You are not going to make war Iran, Jamie. Not this week. 
Um, so the big question is how, in this new strategic concept, CSDP, I'm going, going back to serious, is the CSDP will be, taken, uh, will be taken into account. Am I not right? Um, obviously, from the union's point of view, there is, it's important the, this, this uh, balance between Article 5 and classical role of NATO and the new challenges outside of the Euro-Atlantic uh, area. Uh, obviously, we are interested in con non-conventional threats to security uh, like cyber. I remember while being with Petering in NATO saying we are interested we want to have a report in AFET, which we never had, by the way. And do you have an expertise? Yes. Do you have something already in place? Yes, in Estonia. Uh, could you let us know and pass our documents? Yes, sure, you'll get them. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. There was an invitation. On cybersecurity, which is very closely an uh, issue of equal interest for NATO and, and, and EU, no reaction in spite of promises. Uh, so those new, new, new challenges, Afghanistan, piracy in Somalia, cyber terrorism, non-conventional threats, uh, need uh, necessitate some, something more to be done than just to declare that we like each other, uh, which is fine but not sufficient. Um, the new ambitions of the Union are known, and I'm looking forward to what will happen in the coming, uh, coming times, uh, and also what will result out of, the, of this uh, Franco-Polish uh, ambition. Uh, but I think that we have a lot to contribute to help NATO with this sense of acute impotence, like in Afghanistan, uh, in areas like state building, civilian aid, and related <laughs> issues, including including something which should be of great interest for NATO, which was debated at the Cultural Committee of this House, recently under Doris Park, on the role of culture in conflict prevention and post-conflict solutions. Did you ever think of it in NATO? Um, so we need... Je dois le dire en français parce que ça marche pas en anglais. And I should say this in French. We need the NATOization of the European Union in terms of increasing our capacities. But, and I say this to my friends at NATO, we also need the Europeanization. I'm not saying less America, but Europeanization in terms of uh, NATO and your side of things too. Which means we need a change in attitude, a change in philosophy. And we don't want to just see a repetition of the status quo because it doesn't really lead us anywhere. Looking forward to this uh, Rasmussen visit, but I, I hope that if nothing happens again, it will be just pure courtesy. Um, I think the, the minimum would be the debate with the all relevant bodies of this House uh, on, on the mutual uh, relationship. And I think that if it is after Lisbon, it's, it's not, no, no, it might, makes no sense. You, you, we, we have been talking in, in my, I mean, my, my delegation in Riga, we said it has to be done even before the summer break. I mean, now I know that it's not feasible because we're already in, nearly in July. But when shall we speak on the synergies if not before Lisbon? I mean, your Lisbon, before, before strategic concept being, uh, being uh, finalized. Uh, uh, so let's do something uh, soon together. Otherwise, we'll meet again in one year time and we'll repeat the same things. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much.